Hi everyone, uh, my name is Bruno Silva. I'm one of the dentists here at Brighton Implant Clinic and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, zygomatic implants. Um, I've actually made a video about this topic before and you might see in the videos beforehand um, some extra information about zygomatic implants but I thought it would be good to give you an updated video about um, this treatment, when it's needed, why do we use it and why it uh, provides so many advantages over other types of dental implant treatment. This is specifically um, suitable or rather indicated for patients that have um, extremely limited amounts of bone in the upper jaw. So uh, as I said, yeah, my name is Bruno Silva. I've worked at, I work at the Brighton Implant Clinic and I've been here since the practice opened in 2009 and I've been placing zygomatic implants since 2013. Now, zygomatic implants, they're a different type of implant. Uh, we've got a little model over here. It's a much longer implant. I'm gonna put this model away so that um, hopefully this doesn't uh, give you any uh, concerns or kind of uh, scare you about the treatment. But um, hear me out, let me explain what a zygomatic implant is and how it works. So it's a different type of implant. It's uh, placed into a different part of the jawbone. It's actually placed outside the jawbone or what's uh, technically known as the upper uh, jaw, which is the maxilla. And the reason that this implant is uh, indicated, it's when we have patients that have actually been missing teeth for a very, very long time. So patients that have maybe had an upper denture for a number of years. And what happens is over time, the bone basically becomes thinner. It becomes uh, less dense. It basically atrophies over time. This doesn't happen with all patients because some patients just by uh, genetics have uh, and their anatomy has generally more bone than the average. So some patients um, will never need zygomatic implants, whereas some patients they might actually need zygomatic implants, even if they've only been missing teeth for a short number of a short period of time or even a, a, a low number of years. So in order to provide patients with a full row of uh, teeth, fixed teeth, and we're now referring to like what's known as a full arch solution. Um, we need basically implants that are going to be positioned here at the front, kind of for these anterior teeth positions. And then for our grinding molar teeth positions, we need to have some teeth further back in the mouth as well. Ideally, we're looking for a minimum of four implants that will basically um, be placed at the cornerstones or kind of at the um, kind of areas where they're going to be able to load and support these fixed teeth uh, most comfortably and most um, appropriately. Normally we have most of the bone um, found in these anterior regions of the, of the mouth and these anterior regions are generally easier to restore but what happens when we at the areas at the back of the mouth when we need to have uh, molar teeth and where we need to have teeth that are basically going to do the grinding and chewing. If we don't have bone in those areas, we can then look at really one of two options if it comes to implants. So the first option is um, if you've got, or maybe let's just put three options. So the first option would be that if you have very um, minimal amounts of bone, but still enough for what are known as short implants, it is still possible to actually place some conventional implants at the front where we generally have more bone but here in these areas at the back we can place shorter implants and these shorter implants can be from five or six millimeters in length and they can basically be embedded into the jawbone that we have. Second option is that um, if we don't have even those small amounts of bone available that we can then look at grafting procedures and this is the terms like grafting, sinus grafting, sinus lift. These are procedures whereby we're actually trying to regenerate some, um, uh, some bone from um, grafted bone that can come from other areas of your mouth, which is not very common when we're trying to increase the amount of bone in the sinus. Most commonly we're using uh, synthetic bone or bone that's derived from an animal origin. And what the process involves is it's a separate surgery uh, quite often and we're introducing bone into the sinus area and then we have to wait a few months for that bone to regenerate and to basically integrate with the body's own jawbone. Uh, that option two, the bone grafting um, 
workflow or rather that option two with the, 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 the solution that involves trying to regenerate bone is generally the one that's used very commonly and it is unfortunately sometimes associated with the greater amount of greater number of appointments uh, with higher risks with uh, more potential complications because we're trying to regenerate new bone from many times artificial bone material. My opinion also is that, and also the opinion shared of other dentists that do zygomatic implants, is that the option two where we have grafted bone, many times the bone that's regenerated is not of the same quality, of the same integrity that we have with human bone. And often enough, even if the, the implant will be successful at first, it's more commonly associated with more implant failures over the long term than if it were placed just into normal, natural patient's own bone. So in summary, option two basically can place implants in these areas at the back where we don't have bone, but it means that we need to wait a longer period of time. There's a higher risk of the bone not actually integrating and high risk infection and failure. Longer treatment time, uh, potentially higher cost as well, and uh, more morbidity in terms of um, you've got uh, extra surgery, more swelling, more bruising, etc. So option three are zygomatic implants. So zygomatic implants mostly would involve only these posterior regions. So normally in most cases that we do zygomatic implants, we have enough bone in these areas at the front. So we can use conventional implants in this area at the front, but then on the back areas, where we can't place implants because of the bone is just too short for short implants. And option two, that we don't want to graft the sinus with artificial bone materials, we could consider zygomatic implants. Zygomatic implants are totally um, incredible solutions. Um, when, uh, when planned correctly and placed properly, they really work very, very well. And they actually engage the cheekbone so it's a little bit of a distance from where the implant is actually needed. And the treatment basically, which uh, really, um, which makes me really like this solution is that it involves no artificial bone, no grafting, no waiting for these graft areas to basically regenerate and integrate with the bone. We're now placing an implant into your own bone. And these areas over here, they are generally associated with very good bone quality similar to what we have in the lower jaw the bone uh the the bigger bone the actual procedure itself is slightly more invasive than a conventional all on four and if like i said earlier planned uh, correctly and carried out by an experienced surgeon it really provides a fantastic solution for patients that have been quite often told that you know they can't have implants and the treatment is going to be very complex so in uh, most cases, uh, treatment will be carried out under sedation, so patients will be nice and comfortable. Um, the zygomatic implant procedure with a conventional um, implant procedure at the front will take between two and a half and three and a half hours. Um, and the best part is that these implants, because they're being placed into the patient's own bone, and the success rates of zygomatic implants are in the high 90 percentage uh, zones, it means that they are great, predictable, and solid solutions for patients that are missing teeth that have very limited bone. Once the surgery is completed, we usually take some impressions. The implants are tested for their stability. And in most cases, we are fitting fixed teeth. They're just provisional teeth. We're fitting fixed teeth, usually on the day of surgery, or most commonly the day after. The patients will then come back in to see us and we will fit some temporary teeth that are basically going to be supported onto the implants. So quite fantastic in that we're getting patients with something that's fixed. They're able to eat, they're able to basically um, stick to a soft food diet, but they're able to um, uh, be able to eat and feel the fact that they've got fixed teeth. So I'm very happy that we provide this solution. Um, here at the clinic, we've been providing the solution since 2013. And during that time, we've placed many, many uh, zygomatic implants and we really enjoy placing them. And 
I thought I would share this video and tell you about what a great solution this, um, this implant really is. Um, interesting fact is my mom actually has uh, zygomatic implants and that was probably one of the reasons that I actually decided to go into dentistry and implants was my mom was a big inspiration uh, for me and uh, my mom actually has zygomatic implants and they were placed uh, 1997 so quite some time ago and uh, that makes them now 19 uh, sorry 2024 um, a good number of years so that's what 27 years that they've been in function and still going strong i didn't do them myself it was actually a very respected uh, uh, professor at my university in, back in South Africa and I will be forever indebted to him uh, for helping my mom to basically restore her teeth and restore her smile and give her so much confidence and just generally good well-being. So that's zygomatic implants. Um, if you have any questions and you want to find out more about this procedure if you want to come and speak to us about how we might be able to help you to be able to eat again and enjoy the foods that you like and to be able to smile with confidence, then please do get in touch with us. You can find our details on uh, Brighton, sorry, www.brightonimplantclinic.co.uk and we'd love to help you and see you smile. All right, thank you so much and I hope to see you again soon and have a great day and Love you all. Cheers. Bye-bye.